Hey everybody, Ann here, and it is with great sadness that I am leaving. This is actually, what day is it? Is it Monday? I think it's Monday. Yeah, Monday, and I am leaving the Daniel Boone National Forest. I've actually already left. Um, I left there last night, um, and I'll, I'll make a separate video about this, or I'll just add it to this video later after I'm not driving, but um, a couple things you know, just made me feel a little uncomfortable. So I went into Moorhead and just slept at the Walmart because I knew I had to go there in the morning anyhow and uh, get us some stuff. And so now I'm on my way. And I am on my way to, I don't know, probably past Lexington, maybe Louisville. Um, I may just stop there, I don't know. I may go further, it just depends on how the van's running. And, um, embark upon the next part of my adventure. Um, I'm heading to Tennessee and probably Jackson area. I did check and DoorDash does offer services there in Jackson, which is great. Um, so who knows? I might run into uh, CG and I'll put a link to her channel in my comment section down below. And um, Andy's uh, Tennessee Homestead, God, I am bad with names. CG's easy because it's just CG, but Andy from Tennessee um, may run into them eventually too. I hope so at any rate. I'm excited to meet them. They are just the nicest, most awesome people. I love watching their videos. They're hilarious together. Oh my goodness. So I'm just going to focus on the road because I'm in unfamiliar territory and um, just see how well this girl holds up when she's not having to drive up and down hills and around curvy passages and up and down and having to stop and whatnot. Phew. Some of it was kind of scary for me, but I did it. And so now I'm heading south. Yeah. Check this out. I think somebody's trying to send me a sign. <laughs> Pretty cool. And check out the girl. This is literally her most favorite thing to do. And I have to be going about 65 miles an hour. If I'm not going about 65 miles an hour, she starts into her nervous whining and, and barking and whatnot. But um, as long as I'm going fast enough, she knows she's going to be with mommy for a while. Phew. All righty. I made it all the way to Shepherdsville. Uh, yeah, I think that's where I'm at. Um, I'm just south of uh, Louisville. I think yeah I was gonna stop at a Walmart well I did stop at a Walmart but I was gonna stay there overnight uh, right before I got into Louisville but um, I'm trying to remember the name of that place I don't know I don't know all I know is I'm gonna kind of look around for something to do for a little while maybe take the girl out for a nice long walk somewhere and um, then chill out and hopefully park her overnight <laughs> hopefully they won't kick me out I'm tired and I get, I get nervous when I'm driving in places I'm not familiar with, but I have to tell you, the more that I do it and the more that I just, whew, you know, drop my, because I'm, when I'm driving, I'm all like, oh, <laughs> you know, because I don't know where I'm at. And it's so weird because I drive for a living, basically. Um, but when I'm in familiar areas, you know, until I get used to it, you know, by the time I left um, the Daniel Boone National Forest, I knew that place. Um, I mean, I didn't even need to use GPS. I knew where I was going. I could find the little country roads to get into town and stuff like that. But like I said, this is all new for me. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna chill out here for the rest of the day and then get up bright and early in the morning tomorrow and head further south. Who knows how far south I'll get. I hope I can at least get to Nashville before I lose my grind. <laughs> My face feels numb from all the tension. <laughs> but I'm doing good, guys, and I'm feeling good. All right. Okay, well, um, okay, I almost forgot. Um, I wanted to tell you why I left the Daniel Boone National Forest. And I think it was more of a safety issue than anything else. Um, for the first couple of days that I'd been there, I really didn't talk to anybody. I kind of kept to myself, and I was having a glorious time. But then I kind of started branching out and talking to people, and... Um, most everybody just came and went. They only stayed like one night, two at the most. Um, but there were three camps that kind of stuck around. And um, so I got to know one of, uh, one of them pretty well. His name was Walt. Hi, Walt, if you're watching. Um, his camp was kind of like up above mine. So he could see what was going on down at my camp. If somebody was, you know, he would always let me know if somebody was driving by or, 
or whatever and he'd always honk before he would pull up because Betty you know she goes nuts and um, but Betty was good with the people um, you know meeting all the people she was very friendly so I was real glad about that but um, he left well he left well actually I left the same night that he left um, I probably would have stayed if he was gonna be staying but um, the night before we both left um, a guy happened upon my camp and he was looking for Walt actually wanted to borrow his boat to put out a trout line but there was something that wasn't right about this guy and you know we all talked talked about it um, you know at first I'm like you know what I don't care and one thing that they do he and his his wife he calls her mama and she looks like she I guess was about 70 or something she was an older older woman so we all thought it was his mom but no, it was his wife apparently, so I don't know. Well, he, he and his wife would go to the different camps and ask them for things, ask them for money or whatever. He wanted to sell me this dog tie out and I already had one. But you know, I didn't think much of it really. Um, but then he came into camp with the, the trunk of his car loaded with, with just random stuff. Um, but. I don't know there was something not right he and his wife were out in the water in their clothes walking the shoreline back and forth all the way from their camp and they were in a completely different loop and um, just kind of walking back and forth and I mean I, I told Walt well maybe he was shed setting his trout line maybe he they that's what they were doing but they're they they weren't carrying any of the tools necessary to be able to do that um, and I didn't see them walking back and forth. Walt did, because he could see everything from his camp. And um, so I don't know. But I got to thinking, though. I think they were casing the campsites. Um, because he went around to all the campsites afterwards and warned them. Oh, he warned me first not to leave my dog out overnight because there's a bear and it'll kill your, kill your dog. And um, so he's going to all the camps and saying, do you have a dog? Don't leave him out overnight because we've got a bear here. And um, I don't know, the more I think about it, and another thing, um, early in the morning, the morning that I, that I well, I left later on that, that day, um, Walt said he saw this guy pull up right next to my camp and just sit there for about 15 minutes. Um, and I heard I heard a car out there, but I figure it was Walt just wanting to see if I was awake and if you know wanted to go fishing or whatever. I didn't fish at all. I didn't have a Kentucky license. I didn't risk it. He did. He got a bunch of fish. But he told me it was this guy, and I I don't know. So I kind of thought I think him and his wife going out in the water, looking around, they were casing people's campsites and to see who was there and what was going on and. Um, and I think that they were using the story about putting the trout line out, or trap line, or whatever the, the line it out, as a cover-up for them, for them doing what they were doing. And um, he borrowed the guy's boat. You know, Walt's real nice. He just loaned his boat out to everybody. Um, so the guy took the boat, and um, I don't know if he had planned on just going and, and robbing each of the campsites. And I don't know if his story about don't leave your dogs out, there's a bear, it'll kill your dog, if that was just a way to keep the dogs from alerting the campers when they came up to steal stuff. So, I don't know. Um, I think I might have tried to stay if the other three permanent camp campers were going to be there too because we were all looking out for each other. You know, one would leave, go to town, we'd watch over, you know, the camp, the campsites while they were empty because that's when people go in and steal stuff if they can tell that nobody's there and they've gone into town. Um, there was one guy who had his entire everything stolen, you know, he went into town, left his tent and all of his equipment there, and when he got back, it was all gone. So, um, it doesn't matter how beautiful the place is, or how sweet and southern and whatever, there are still people out there who are going to do bad things, you know, and so you just have to be careful. So, I went with my gut. You know, I talked to Walt, and I said, I just don't know. So, um, yeah, we, we said our goodbyes, and I left. I slept at the Moorfield, Moorhead, I don't know, the nearest town to the Daniel Boone Forest where the uh, Paragon Craney Loops are. 
Um, I stayed at the Walmart and slept overnight and I did fine. Um, I was a little worried I might get the tap on the window, but I didn't. Um, I don't know if there were any other campers there. I didn't notice when I pulled in and I didn't notice any when I pulled out, but I'm glad I did it because I think that without Walt up there on that hill, I think I would have just not slept a single wink because he told me all, and there was no cell phone service out there, no internet. Um, you know, you could scream out for help and maybe another camper would hear, hear you, but um, he said, all you have to do is honk your horn and I'll be down. Well, so he, he left and I'm like, so I figured I would just keep moving and that's what I'm doing. And um, so yeah, who knows where I'll end up tomorrow. But anyway, that's all I got for you guys. See you in the next video. God, that was lame. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.